Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video, we saw how to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Now we're going to look at the Norton equivalent circuit. But as you can see, essentially, once you've found the Thevenin equivalent circuit, to find the Norton equivalent circuit, we simply do a source transformation in the exact same way as we've done before. Notice we turn the voltage source into a current source and we take the impedance which is in series with the voltage source and turn it into the very same impedance but in parallel with the current source. So essentially the Norton impedance is exactly the same as the Thevenin impedance. And to find the Norton current all we have to do here is take the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin impedance, which is the same as taking the Thevenin voltage and divided by the Norton impedance, since the Thevenin impedance and Norton impedance are exactly the same thing, and you have the Norton current. And again, how do you find the Thevenin impedance, which essentially is the Norton impedance? Well, the same as before, you find it the same way as before. You take every source, every current source in the circuit and turn it into an open circuit and every voltage source in the circuit and turn it into a short circuit and then you measure the impedance across the remainder of the circuit. Now, I shouldn't go over here, I should go over here. So once you've done that to the circuit, you've changed every current source to an open circuit and every voltage source to a short circuit, you then calculate the impedance between the terminals A and B with, of course, no load connected to A and B. So whatever is left in the circuit, then you find the impedance. That's then the Thevenin impedance, which is, of course, the Norton impedance, which is essentially the impedance across A and B once you've done this. Then to find the Thevenin voltage, well, you then find the voltage across A and B with no load connected to it, simply restore the circuit to what it was before, find the voltage from A to B, and that becomes your Thevenin voltage. Then you simply take the Thevenin voltage divided by the Thevenin impedance, and you find the Norton current, and now you have an equivalent circuit. You have the original circuit that looks like this, and turn it into a Norton equivalent circuit. So either one of these circuits, the Thevenin equivalent circuit or the Norton equivalent circuit, makes it often very easy to solve a circuit that otherwise would be very difficult or nearly impossible to solve any other way. So you'll see it's a very nice method and we'll show you some examples of how to do that in the videos to come. <laughs>